The toggle switch by Collins and the repressilator by Elowitz were two of the early demonstrations of a genetic circuit design. The toggle switch is based on two mutually repressing transcription factors. They draw the comparable diagram as such where our R and S are designated repressor 2 and repressor 1. Other than labeling, these are equivalent diagrams. Note that when we speak of toggle switches and devices in general, there is often a lack of clarity about whether we are speaking of a specific DNA sequence, a specific composition of sequences in which their order in specific sequences is unspecified, or an even more abstract representation of the interaction connectivity of a series of components. When we speak of the toggle switch and repressilator, we are speaking of this more abstract definition of a device, and many specific sequences could concretize these specific gene and promoter specifications. They construct their genetic circuit from the TET repressor and LAC repressor. So we can express what they built a little more concretely now. The toggle switch turns out to exist in two bistable states. If you kickstart the system with IPTG, PLAC is on, so TETR is high. PTET is repressed, and the cells are green. If you kickstart the system with ATC, then PTET is on, so LAC I is high, and, and TETR and GFP production becomes low. By bistable, we mean that the system will return to the higher low state once it has entered that state and persist in that state. Thus, when you induce the cells one way or the other, then remove the inducer, the cells will stay in whichever state you put them in initially. Let's do some math. The species we want to describe are the R and S concentrations, and we want to model their change over time in terms of differential equations. The concentration of R protein goes up when an R mRNA, M sub R, is translated, and R goes down when one decays or the cells be become bigger and become more dilute. This is the typical way we have been modeling translation when there is no translation control taking place. Thus all the relevant aspects of the model are contained by the equations expressing the mRNA's concentration over time. The change in R's mRNA over time can be described using Shea Ackers. If S binds to the promoter as a dimer, then the exponent in our fraction term is 2, so the fraction of promoters active for transcription is given by 1 over 1 plus S squared. And we multiply that with whatever maximally expressed rate is for the PS promoter, so that's beta sub S. Those mRNAs are diluted over time at some rate gamma, so we have a minus gamma times MR term uh, at the end of the equation. It is customary to make an approximation that assumes that protein product is simply proportional to the mRNA concentration, and this is indeed true with a steady state assumption. Thus we can, make, we can model R without mention of the mRNA as some rate constant beta s over 1 plus ks s squared minus gamma r. Since the two inverters are arranged symmetrically, the equation for S looks about the same, just switching the letters R and S. The d-dimensionalized version of these equations is, des is described in the paper. They call them U and V in the paper, but we'll call them X and Y. Just to reorient you, let's go back through these variables. X and Y are the concentrations of repressor 1 and 2. The alpha terms are the synthesis rate of X and Y. Beta and gamma are the cooperativity of the repression from promoter 1 and 2, which usually will have the value of 2 since usually these repressors function as dimers. There are multiple things you can do once you have differential equation models of your system. You can simulate it numerically and explore the effects of parameters and variables. You can also ask questions about the model analytically. In this case, the authors are discussing the steady states of the system. When the values of beta and gamma are 2, or in other words, when they are dimers, this system has three steady states. One is unstable and two are stable. The unstable one corresponds to the condition when the rates of R and S transcription balance each other out and neither dominates. The stable state corresponds to the conditions in which mostly R or mostly S is being produced. When the binding of the transcription factors is not cooperative and they operate as monomers, the beta and gamma have the value 1 and they only, in the system only has one stable steady state. 
In contrast to the toggle switch, the repressilator is based on three mutually repressing transcription factors. Two of these three inverters are the same ones as those used in the toggle switch, TED-R and LAC-I controlling PTET and PLAC respectively. The third inverter uses the lambda repressor. Elowitz models the system in terms of six differential equations expressing the M and P terms for each transcription factor. So that's the rate of change of the mRNA and protein specific to each transcription factor. Notice that these equations have the same form as those in our previous derivation. The protein terms are first order with respect to the mRNA concentration and first order with respect to the protein concentration. The equations look a little different because they have been de-dimensionalized differently. However, this is the same basic model. When they scan through the parameter space, they find that different values of alpha and beta terms give rise to different behavior. There are some regimes in which the transcription factor dominates, leading to stable states. For a specific window of parameters, the system is unstable and will oscillate. Experimentally, experimentally they build the repressilator on a single plasmid, and for certain expression levels of the three components, the system will oscillate. Here they synchronize the cells at time zero by addition of ATC, and then they follow the cell's fluorescence over time as they grow on an agar pad. They observe pulses of increased GFP production from the TET promoter every 150 minutes or so.